Our gospel reading this morning comes from the gospel according to Matthew as we read from the 13th chapter. We continue to read from the parables of Jesus. This morning we will be reading from uh, chapter 13, verse 31 through 33, and then continuing with 44 through 52. So let us attend to God's word for us this Sunday morning. Jesus told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, which a man took and planted in his field. Though it is the smallest of all seeds, yet when it grows, it is the largest of garden plants and becomes a tree, so that the birds come and perch in its branches. He told them still another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed into 60 pounds of flour until it worked all through the dough. And continuing at verse 44, Jesus said, The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again, and then in his joy went and sold all he had and bought that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he found one of great value, He went away and sold everything he had and bought it. Once again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was let down into the lake and caught all kinds of fish. When it was full, the fishermen pulled it up onto the shore. Then they sat down and collected the good fish in baskets, but threw the bad away. This is how it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come and separate the wicked from the righteous, and throw them into the blazing furnace, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all these things? Jesus asked. Yes, they replied. He said to them, Therefore, every teacher of the law who has become a disciple in the kingdom of heaven is like the owner of a house who brings out of his storeroom new treasures as well as old. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So I think most of you know that at one time I was a a practicing scientist, um, did experimental work, analyzed data, you know, all those those things that scientists do. And one of the interesting things when you're training to be a scientist, one of the things you have kind of drummed into you is to beware of what they call confirmation bias. You see, as human beings, we have a tendency to see what we want to see. And we look at things, and if they agree with what we expect, we just accept them. We've got a bias to confirm what we believe. And if they don't fit with what we expect, well, we tend to, to... ignore it or find some way to set it aside. When you're doing experiments, you collect data and say you've got data points you're plotting on a curve, and if one doesn't fit, well, you find reasons to discard it, something that went wrong with the experiment or something. Um, But oftentimes, that, that data point that's off base is the one that leads you to new understanding. A new, a new way of grasping what it is you've been studying. Confirma- confirmation bias is not anything new. It's something that human beings have had to deal with forever. Jesus goes through and he tells all these kingdom parables. And then he says to his disciples, do you understand all these things? Do you get it? Have you put it together? And they say, yeah, sure. We understand this. And then Jesus says to them, well, every teacher of the law, that is every, every scribe, every um, Bible scholar, every teacher of the law who's become a disciple in the kingdom is like an owner of the house who brings out of his storeroom new treasures as well as old. Jesus is saying, don't just look for what for the old things, those things you you think you understand, those things you think you grasp. 
but be prepared to see what is new, what is unexpected. We see that even in, in the first of today's parables, these, these five kingdom parables. The first one says that the kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, which a man took and planted in his field. And you say, oh yeah, Jesus, we've heard that one before. We know what you're talking about. You know, faith is like a mustard seed, and, and if we have enough faith, we can move mountains. You know, we don't need a whole lot of faith. It's, it's enough. It'll blossom and grow. And we think because that's how Jesus talks about a mustard seed somewhere else, that he, he's just saying the same thing here. But notice he doesn't say that faith is like a mustard seed. He says the kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed. Okay. Same illustration, but he's getting at something very different. He's not talking about our own personal faith, our own discipleship of, of how if we each as individuals have enough faith, we can do amazing things. No, he's saying that the kingdom is an amazing thing. That the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, is like a mustard seed. He's saying, you see all the little things we're doing right now, the little band of disciples he had. Okay? He says, you're, the, you're like that mustard seed. And what you're doing is going to have effects far beyond what you can even begin to imagine. That those, those small, that small band of disciples was going to go into Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria, and all the world. And it would blossom and grow so that the kingdom of God we see taking root all over. So that we're sitting here this morning, you know, miles and miles away from where Jesus talked about this. Parables aren't always saying what we think they're saying. One of the, the other parables Jesus tells here, he says, you know, the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure. It's hidden in the field, and when a man found it, he hid it again. Then in his joy went and sold all he had and bought that field. And we say, oh, okay, you know, we, we get that. Right? That the gospel, that, that truth that God is seeking to, to reconcile us through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus and because of what Jesus has done for us, well, that, that is something that we should devote our whole lives to. He's saying we need to be fully committed in order to gain this treasure that God has given us in what Jesus has done. That everything about us, everything we do, everything we have, we should invest everything in the kingdom. And even though most of us don't do that very well, we at least get what he's saying here. Yeah. And we read the next one, that the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he found one of great value, he went away, sold everything he had, and bought it. It's like, okay, well, yeah, we understand that, right? That the kingdom of heaven is worth giving everything for. Except, he doesn't say the kingdom of heaven is like a fine pearl. Jesus says the kingdom of heaven is a merchant in search of fine pearls. It's the kingdom that gives everything for those fine pearls. So what's the pearl? You are. You're that pearl that was... was in this, this slimy shell with an oyster. Yeah. And the kingdom of heaven has sought you out. God has sought you out because he sees you as being of great worth. And he gave everything for you. Jesus left his, his place at the right hand of the Father, gave up his power and majesty and became one of us, lived in poverty, was despised and rejected. He gave his life because he thinks we're that worth it. 
And isn't it curious that these two parables seem to be saying things that, that almost sound opposite, don't they? If you want the kingdom of heaven, you better give everything you've got to get it. But the kingdom of heaven is giving everything for you. It's as though the, the seeker becomes the sought, the hunter becomes the hunted. It's like this incredible game of, of hide and seek. But we're not already sure who's it. Yeah. Are we it? Or is God it? Yeah. And we go and we think we've found God and find that God has actually found us. Because the kingdom of heaven is, well, it's a curious thing. I think what Jesus is really trying to get across to us here is that when we think we know, we miss things. As Paul said, he who thinks he knows doesn't know as he ought to know. And to be a disciple in the kingdom of heaven requires us to be humble. To acknowledge that, yeah, Jesus, I, I don't get it. All these things you're saying, you say, have, you, have I understood all these things? The answer is, well, not really. A little bit, maybe. But just as when we see things in, in research that we didn't expect, that's when you learn. That's when something new and exciting happens. And that's the way it is with our journey of faith. It's those new, unexpected things that if we're open to, will lead us in exciting and fruitful directions. And the reality is, right now, we don't know what we're doing. I mean, this is not how I was taught to do church when I was in seminary. Okay? This is not how you expected to be doing life when you were growing up or even a year ago. Right? Things are, are new. Things are different. And we don't know where they're going to go. But we do know that we are God's. We do know that God is, is in control. And we do know that if we keep our eyes open and we trust, he will lead us in new and fruitful directions that we may never have expected. That disciple who, who keeps their eyes open pulls out of, of Scripture, pulls out of the faith, pulls out of life wonderful things, both old but also new. So let us be open to whatever new things God is bringing our way. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.